Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today and talk about a specific piece of reading terminology, the DNF. So I'm going to talk about what the DNF is, what it means to me, why I've decided to embrace DNF in my reading, and what that's meant for my reading since I decided to do so. So first of all, for those who don't know, DNF in terms of reading and in various other contexts means did not finish. So you started something and didn't finish it for whatever reason that may be. As far as reading goes, and certainly my view on it, it's for a book that I specifically started to read. Now that sounds a little bit strange calling it a book that I specifically started to read. How else are you going to do it? But I sometimes do first chapter reads, for instance, where I'll sample the first chapter of a book and then hopefully later on I will get to that book and uh, continue reading it. I don't always do so though, and certainly I don't do so at the time. I don't call that a DNF because I've not technically started to read that book, I've just sampled it. So for me that's more like a DNS, I suppose, a did not start. So in terms of DNF, it's for books that I've specifically been intending to read. I've started reading them with the intention of continuing and hopefully finishing and enjoying the book, but in this instance, I didn't finish it for whatever reason that may be. And at this point, I will point out that although it wasn't intentional, I think it is pretty relevant that while talking about DNFs, I'm wearing this pretty cool Death from Discworld t-shirt, which was a recent birthday present. So thank you very much, Marie, my mother-in-law, for getting me this t-shirt. In terms of the DNF though, I'm not going to go too in-depth in this video. There's not a vast amount I don't think that needs saying about the DNF, but I'm going to talk a little bit about my DNF history, why I decided to embrace the DNF in my reading and what that's meant for my reading since I decided to do so. While doing that, I'll also go through a few stats for the books that I've read, or more importantly, I guess, for this video, the books that I've not finished reading. So I mentioned that I've embraced the DNF. Historically, it's not really something that I've done because, well, I guess really I've been too stubborn. I've always been one of those people who pushes through. And I'm a bit of a hypocrite in this as well because I would always tell people, if you're not enjoying a book, put it down and pick up another book that you hopefully will enjoy. But then I wouldn't take my own advice because I was too stubborn and I wanted to push through and I wanted to finish a book. So over the many, many years I've been reading and the books that I've in my adult life uh, kind of catalogued on reading apps like Goodreads and Storylace and actually looking back, it's just the last 12 months since July 2022 that I'm actually counting. Uh, but before that period, I decided to DNF just five books. Since last year, that number has grown. It's now up to 14, which Storylace tells me is just 3% of my entire reading history. I'm not going to go through the recent ones because the intention of this video isn't any form of negativity, uh, but those five books that I DNF'd some years ago were The Grim Company by Luke Skull, A Time of War by Catherine Kerr, The Dragonlance Chronicles by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, the Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson, and The Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks. Now, I actually did DNF that three times. I was so eager to read it and hoped to enjoy it, but I failed on three separate occasions before deciding that enough is enough. I'm not going to go back to that at any point. I also did originally DNF book three of Mellors and Book of the Fallen by Stephen Erickson. That was Memories of Ice. Um, I don't know how far through it I got, but I did return to that one in July two years ago, 2021, and did actually manage to finish it before deciding then to DNF the series as a whole. In terms of series, actually, I will note that I include a stat in my monthly reading wrap-up where I look at the series and I have a not continuing with uh, kind of figure. This is slightly different for me because I see this as I've read the first book of the series and I've decided not to continue. I'm not going to uh, track it as a series that I'm actively reading. I'm not going to bother reading book two because I didn't enjoy book one enough to continue with the series. I don't call that a series DNF though. For me, a series DNF is more a series that I have decided I'm going to continue with. I've read more than one book in the series. I intend at some point to complete the series. But then for whatever reason, I've decided actually now I'm going to change my mind on that, put the series down and not read the next book in the list. 
So I did say that I've embraced the DNF and it was at the start of this year 2023 that I decided to actively embrace it. Uh, so previously I mentioned that I had 14 DNFs in my kind of reading history and five of those were before basically 12 months ago. So last year I had two DNFs and since deciding to embrace the DNF in my reading in 2023 I've had seven so we're in July at the moment so I'm averaging one book a month that I've started and decided not to finish. And the main reason for this is kind of what I mentioned before if you're not enjoying a book what's the point in reading it? The only person I'm reading for is myself. I provide reviews, I provide wrap-ups, I provide reading stats and uh, kind of notes on my general reading experience for you lovely people who watch my videos and read my reviews and interact with me across all the different social media and discord but ultimately I'm reading for my own pleasure and if I'm not enjoying a book there are so many other books that I want to read time's too short and all of that so why don't I put it down and pick up the next one and hope to enjoy it and it took me a little while to get past that kind of stubborn streak that I had and I'm definitely happy that I did embrace the DNF because I'm someone who also doesn't really have reading slumps and I think if I'm reading a book and I'm not really enjoying it and I'm pushing through and I'm forcing myself to read it essentially that's the sort of thing that leads to a reading slump one thing that I decided not to do though is to DNF a commitment read that I'm doing for primarily SPFBO. If I'm in a buddy read for instance and I'm not enjoying the book then I will put the book down. I'll maybe give it more of a shot than I would if I was just reading it for myself. But as far as SPFBO goes I feel like I've got a commitment to the author not just to the reader so I will continue and I will finish a book so I can provide a full review of a finished item. One of the books I DNF'd last year was for SPFBO uh, but that was for a specific reason that I decided to put it down and that's exactly what you should do if there's a specific reason and you're not enjoying the book put it down and move on to something different. Now just the last thing as far as my personal kind of reading tastes and uh, the number of DNFs that I have goes, um, I think previously the small number of DNFs that I had was because over the years I have become a really good judge of my own reading tastes. I know what I like and I'm pretty good at deciding whether a book is going to match those tastes or not. So pretty much every book that I pick up is one that I've got a really good chance of finishing and enjoying. Now because I've started reading a lot more over the last few years, that's where the DNF really comes in because sometimes I will get it wrong. You can't always tell until you're actually reading the book. There may be specific writing styles or specific elements within that book that you won't know about until you've read it and that's where the DNF comes into play for me. So if we look at some stats for me and DNFs then, I said that I had 3% of my reading history, 14 books in total. Looking at just this year with the 7 books that I've DNF'd since deciding to embrace it, I've read a total of 48 books this year so far, including those 7. And that would be 14.5% of the year's reading so far that I've decided to DNF. Those seven books would give me an additional 765 pages. That's just the number of pages that I actually read, not the number of pages in the book itself. So I've read a combined 765 pages across those seven books before deciding to DNF them, which is an average of 109 pages per book before deciding to put it down. And as far as percentages go, that works out as an average of 23% of the book so I think I'm giving them a pretty good shot before deciding to DNF them. For the highest and the lowest in terms of progress through a book before deciding to put it down this year I have one book that I got to page 178 there's another one actually that was 176 pages before I decided to DNF it and actually one of the two books that I DNF'd last year I got to page 230 before deciding no this is not working for me and I'm just forcing myself through it let's put it down. And then for percentages this year, two of the books that I DNF'd, I got up to 30%. And actually the two books that I DNF'd last year, both of those I made it to 40% before putting the book down. And then the fewest number of pages I've made before DNF in a book this year is 50. Second in that list is 55. And then after that, we're going to page 100 or just below. And then that works out as 13% and 15% respectively for those two books that I didn't get too far through before deciding, no, it's not for me. 
So because my reading uh, philosophy, I guess, is evolving as a whole, I'm reading more books because of the way I'm reading and a number of other factors. Deciding to embrace the DNF has definitely helped me. It's something that I'm really happy with just in terms of the changed mindset when I'm reading. And it's something that I'm going to continue doing as well. Now, one of the things that I do when I DNF a book is I still review it. So I try to review every book that I read and it does take sometimes a little while for me to uh, go back and normally what I'll do is look at my monthly wrap up and then I will transcribe what I say about the book and put it into Goodreads, Storylace and so forth. Uh, but when I DNF a book, I will still write a review. I won't give it a star rating because I don't believe in that. I think that you can only do that if you've actually finished and read the whole book. So when I DNF it, although I don't rate the book, I'll still put in a little review saying how far I got through the book, what I thought of, what I did read of it, and why I decided not to continue with it. So as with any of my reviews, I'll go for honesty and I won't go for negativity. There will obviously be a negative element of it because something didn't work for me, but I will always try to look at the positives as well. What I did enjoy, and the sentiment essentially is that it may not be a bad book, it's just one that, for whatever reason, didn't work for me. So that's a little bit about the DNF anyway, the good old did not finished. Let me know in the comments down below, are you someone who does or specifically doesn't like to DNF a book? And do you have any particularly strong thoughts one way or the other? I'd be interested to hear. That's everything for today. I hope to see you in the next video sometime soon. Until then, as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books. Bye for now.